Hi guys and welcome back to another video of Gaming with the Powers and today is Solo Saturday. Uh, so for today's Solo Saturday guys, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Kickstarter game Sky Tier Horde and I will be showing you guys a solo playthrough. This is coming from Sky Tier Games and uh, Sky Tier Horde guys is like a tower defense card battler game. Uh, it has some similarities to Hearthstone if you guys are familiar with that. But uh, let's go ahead and jump down to the table. I'm going to show you how to set the game up, how to get everything ready, and then we'll go through a playthrough. Okay, guys, so we are down here at the table, and we have everything that we need for a solo playthrough of uh, Sky Tier Horde. So I'm going to show you how to set the game up, and then we're going to go ahead and run through a playthrough. So the first thing you're going to want to get, guys, is you're going to want to grab your portal cards, right? So every uh, mode, whether it is solo, co-op, or versus, is, is going to have a generic portal card, okay? Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, guys, but at the bottom of the card is a Roman numeral, which is a three. Uh, there's going to be a, uh, and then to the left of the Roman numeral is going to be a little icon of a person. So for the solo mode, there'll be one person. For the co-op mode, there'll be two people. And then for the versus mode, is going to have a small little versus in that little box. Uh, so you will take the generic card for that mode. You will go ahead and put it over to the side. Then you're going to want to determine your difficulty. Uh, so on the other cards that you'll have, the other portal cards that look like the base one, uh, you'll see uh, uh, underneath the Roman numerals or to the right of the Roman numerals is going to be a symbol, right? So there's going to be a half circle, a full circle, or a circle with a dot, okay? The half circle is going to be normal mode. The full circle is going to be hard mode. And the circle with a dot is going to be what they call painful mode, which is the hardest difficulty, okay? So I'm choosing the normal difficulty. I'm going to do everything straight out the rule book. So I will take the two portal cards, the Roman numeral one and two that have the half circle uh, icon in there. And I'm going to stack them on top of each other like this. Then I will take the common card, uh, the common portal card and stack them all together to have a stack of three different cards. Uh, so let's kind of look at this portal card in detail, guys. So you'll notice some numbers around this card. So how this is going to work is this is going to determine how many monsters are getting summoned each turn. Uh, what will happen then at the end is the card will rotate 90 degrees and that is how many monsters will come out after the card rotates. Uh, in the middle of the card it shows some text and then in the bottom left hand card is a number. This is the amount of mana that I'm going to gain every single turn and then in the right hand side is the health of this portal. Once this portal has taken six or more damage this portal will become destroyed and then the next portal will be active for the uh, remainder of the game. And then when I deal eight damage to that one, then we'll get to the last uh, portal. Okay. So you want to select your difficulty in your portal card. So again, I have the normal difficulty. So I've taken the two cards with the common card and I'm putting them together. You're then going to want to read the setup of the uh, first Roman numeral uh, portal card you have. So it says the Yetnar, Onikai, and Zephyrite minions will gain plus one health. At the end of the turn, when this portal is destroyed, reveal the next portal card in the upright position. Okay, uh, so I will take a, uh, a health token. So these are double-sided. So this is a plus health, and this is a minus health of a broken heart. So I will give the Yetnar, the Onikai, and the uh, Zephylite minions plus one health. Uh, now these minions, again, are in the back line. They are, cannot, they are not considered in play until I bring them in play, and that is one of the actions I can do on my turn. But they all have the same event. You'll notice they have zero and zero. Uh, uh, what happens is a minion will get plus one attack for each health that is on them. So he now has one health, one attack, one health, one attack, one health, one attack, okay? So that is the original setup for your portal cards and the minions, okay? Now, what you're then going to do is you're going to take all of the common horde cards or the monster cards, right? These are going to be denoted, guys, by a full circle in the top right-hand corner of the card. So you will take all these, just kind of set them over here for now, and then you will determine what horde monster deck you want to face. There are four different horde decks in the game. You have the Renegade, you have the Undead, you have the Predator, and you have the Nightmare, okay? Um, they each scale kind of in difficulty. Uh, but these are denoted in the top right hand corner of the card. So the Renegade deck is going to have the Skull cards. You can also denote them by uh, in the banner underneath the text of what the actual monster or card is. It'll say monster and then Renegade or Predator or Undead next to that card, right? So I will take all of these Renegade monster horde cards. I will combine them 
with the common cards and this will create your horde deck okay so i'll go ahead and give this a few shuffles and that is the horde deck that i will be facing if you wanted to choose another deck say like the undead deck you would just do the same thing you would take all the cards with the undead uh text beneath them or in their right hand corner you will shuffle them with all of the common horde cards to create your horde deck so i have my horde deck and i'll just put it close to me so, and then the last thing which you're going to do is choose your boss monster, okay? The boss monsters in this game, guys, are called Outsiders. So you will take the uh, two versions of the Outsider. There is a Roman numeral 1 and a numeral, no, Roman numeral 2 of each uh, Outsider or boss monster. You will take both versions. You will take the second version and kind of just stick them over to the side for now because you're not going to need them. And you will take the first version of the Outsider and put him in his own little pile uh, so he can be summoned. So that is everything you need for the AI in the, uh, the computer, pretty much. So that is all the Horde monsters, and that is the AI, and now you are ready to go. So now you must select uh, your deck and, and um, go from there, okay? So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to choose what type of uh, clan or what color you want to be, right? So there's four different clans or colors in the game. You have blue, green, uh, red, and yellow, okay? And so what you will do is you will take all the cards of that color with, or all the cards with that banner of that color, right? So all of these cards have a blue banner, right? So I will take all of the cards that have my respective color that I want to be. So I'm going to use the uh, cards that it recommends in the rule book for now. And so this is the blue, the blue clan, right? So in this blue clan, you will have 39 cards, generic cards. You will have two uh, heroic ally cards and you will have two castles, okay? So let's look at the castles first. So I have two different castles to choose from, right? You will choose one of these two castles and just put the other one to the side because you won't need that for the remainder of the game. I'm going to choose the castle that it recommends for the first playthrough, which is the Gaping Maw. So this is my castle, right? This game, again, has some deck building elements to it, or you can use the pre-built deck that it comes with. Uh, if you want to use the actual deck building elements of the game, all you will do is flip your card over, and it will give you some text of what cards to start with, and then the any other generic cards and their symbols there that you will need. So, for example, I can only have a max of two Legendary, six Mythic. I'm not going to get into that in this playthrough. I'm just going to use the pre-built deck at my availability, okay? So I'm taking the Gaping Maw, which is my castle. Uh, it has some text for an effect. So it says, I can exhaust this card and pay one mana to either remove up to two negative health from my castle, uh, two, uh, one negative health from an ally, or draw a card. And then in the bottom right-hand corner, it tells me how much health my castle has, uh, and it has 20 health, okay? So let's talk about the pre-built decks. Uh, before we move any further, guys, this is a little confusing because it doesn't mention in the rule book at all about how the pre-built decks come. I actually had to go online and look at this. So basically, guys, if you just want to use a generic pre-built deck, again, you're going to take all 39 cards that have the same color banner as the uh, color that you want to be. And then all you're going to do is choose one of these heroic allies and you will put that heroic ally in this deck and you will have a total deck of 40 cards, right? Uh, this can be very confusing because as you can see, if you look on the back of this deck, it says deck building rules. For example, you must have Gul Barn and 39 other cards in your deck. You may include any shapeshifter and you cannot include any Bushido. So uh, that's going to be under the under the name of the card. It'll say Heroic Ally Shapeshifter. So any card that is a shapeshifter, I could put in that deck. And so it got really confusing because the each clan has like two different like separate clans inside of it. If that makes sense. So like you have the shapeshifters for the blue, and then you also have the Royal Guard. So at first when I got it, I separated them out just like that. And then I realized, well, I only have 22 cards. How do I do everything? And then, you you know, you can mix the different clans together, right? So I can have some blue, some green, uh, some red if I want to. That is the full range of the deck building you can do. Um, I'm not doing that today because it can get kind of confusing. Again, I'm just doing the basic pre-built uh, pre decks, which is you're taking all the cards of one color, you're choosing your heroic ally, and then you are shuffling those cards together, okay? 
So let's look at these heroic allies really quickly. So at the top of the card, they're going to have a mana cost. So this guy would cost three mana to play. He would cost six. In the middle, you're going to have some effect text uh, from the card. In the bottom left-hand corner of the card here, you're going to have a sword with a number. That's how much damage this card is going to do. And then in the bottom right-hand corner, you have a health value, which is how much health that that heroic ally or card has, okay? So you'll select one of these. So I'm going to take uh, Gilbarn here. You'll put the other one out to the side because you won't need it. And you will just shuffle him into the deck. And you are basically now ready to play. So you will have your tracker, and you will put your tracker at zero on the mana track. This is the mana track right here. You will go ahead and draw five cards from the top of your deck. And you have the option to mulligan any of these cards you want. Uh, so you can put as many cards back as you want, reshuffle, and draw again. So let's go ahead and take five cards from the top of this deck. Uh, and let's see what I got here. So I got Wind Riders, which is an ally. Shaman's another ally. Clan of the Falcon, another ally. Uh, Sky Tier Mine, which is a spell. And a Clan of the Elk, which is another ally. Um... I think I'm going to put the Clan of the Falcon back. No, I'll keep that. Uh, I'm actually going to keep this hand for now, and we'll kind of go uh, from there. Okay, so I'm keeping this hand, so I'm going to go ahead and put these cards down here, guys, and I will kind of show you what I got, right? So starting off, I got the Wind Riders, uh, cost of four, got an attack of five and a health of four. It says, after a Wind Riders neighbor strikes a monster, I can rebuild one. So a neighbor is gonna be uh, allies in the same lane that are together. So this, uh, these two guys will be considered neighbors, okay? Uh, so a rebuild is going to be put a card from my discard pile back on top of the deck. Uh, when he fights, during the fight phase, he has a fight effect. A minion with an attack of four or less cannot pillage uh, for the remainder of the turn. And I'll kind of walk you through that, okay? We have Shamans here, cost of two, uh, attack of one, health of one. When I play this card, I can remove up to two health uh, from the castle and exhaust Shamans. Uh, or I can exhaust this card to add one mana to the mana pool. Uh, Clan of the Falcon, three mana to attack one health. When I play, I can remove up to one health from an ally. Uh, I can exhaust him. A Clan of the Falcon neighbor gains plus one attack and plus one armor for the remainder of the turn. Nice. Uh, Sky Tier Mine with a cost of one. Uh, this is a spell. Uh, I can play this to add two mana to the mana track, remove up to two health from an ally or from the castle. And then Clan of the Elk for four mana has two attack, three health. After you remove one or more health from an ally, Clan of the Elk may gain... Uh, minus one health to add one mana to the track. I can exhaust this ally uh, to remove up to one negative health from another ally or add one mana, okay? So that's kind of interesting there. All right, so now we're going to go into the game, okay? So again, guys, uh, to be victorious, I must defeat the second version of the Outsider, okay? So uh, when I defeat the first portal, the first Outsider will come out. When I defeat him in the second portal, the second Outsider will come out, and I must defeat him. My lose conditions are, if my castle ever takes 20 or more damage, uh, my castle is destroyed, I am defeated, or if my deck of 40 cards runs out, I am defeated as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the different phases and then we'll get moving. So the first phase of the game, guys, is going to be called the refresh phase. You will gain mana. So you're going to gain mana equal to the number in the bottom left hand card of the portal. So that is a four. So I will jump up to four mana and I will ready any exhausted cards. So I have no exhausted cards at the moment. The next phase is going to be the horde phase where I will summon monster horde monsters, okay, or spells. Uh, so that number is going to be the number that is facing up in the portal, which is a 1. So I will draw the top card of the deck, and I will put this in play. So this is a spell card, guys. It says uh, when its effect is Radamil minions will gain plus 3 health for the remainder of the turn. Uh, all right. It says after a monster is destroyed, the uh, Radamil minions will gain plus 1 health. All right, so that is the spell card. So no monsters have come out into my lanes. Um, and then uh, you would do that for every monster. So you would put all the monsters out, then you would resolve them in, in order, and then that is the horde phase. So now we go to the alliance phase, which is my turn. So I have five actions available to me. Uh, I can play alliance card by paying the cost of the card. 
I can engage minions. So these minions that are in the back line, I can bring them into the lanes, okay? The advantage of doing that, guys, is the, remember, uh, I don't know if I said this, but the only way I can draw cards from my deck is by defeating a minion or defeating a monster. So you want to bring these minions into the lanes, defeat them to be able to draw cards. Also, at the end of my turn, any minions that are in the back line out of play and not in the lane, however much health is equal to all of the minions combined is how much, how many cards I would discard from the top of my deck. So right now, I would be discarding uh, six cards from the top of my deck if I did not bring any of these minions in to try and attack them. So while the only way they will do damage is if they're brought into play, if not, they'll be discarding cards from my deck. So it's an ebb and flow of when to bring them in and when not to bring them in, okay? Uh, that was engaging minions. I can use any exhaust abilities on my cards, and I will just simply exhaust the card by moving it down. And then uh, I can move my allies freely between lanes. Now, this only applies to allies. You have other cards in the game called towers. And if I get one of those that comes out, I'll play it and show you how that works. But only allies can move and switch places, all right? And then I can discard alliance cards that are in play. So speaking of those towers, right? Uh, once a tower gets used up, it just stays in the lane. And um, basically, I cannot switch the tower to try and attack monsters. And so I want to destroy that card and put it in my discard pile. So let's go ahead and think about what I want to do here. So I have no monsters out, but I got some minions here uh, that I can try and take care of. So I think what I might do is uh, spend two mana to play the shamans uh, in this lane, right? And then, uh, let's see, I got two mana left over. I'm going to exhaust my Shaman. So what you'll do is just simply move them down here, or you can rotate them 90 degrees if you don't have the play mat. And I will add one mana to the mana track, so I am at three, okay? Uh, next, what I will do is I will spend my three, bringing me down to zero to play Clan of the Falcon, all right? His play effect is when he remove up to minus one, remove up to one negative health from an ally. I can exhaust him uh, for a neighbor of mine to gain plus one attack and plus one armor for the remainder of the turn, which I will do. Okay, so I will exhaust him, and his neighbor is the shamans here. So the shamans will get plus one attack and plus one armor for the remainder of the turn. And when a card is exhausted, guys it will still be able to fight in the lane. So just because you exhaust it doesn't mean it's not going to be able to fight. Okay, so that is all of my things. Let me see here. Uh, I'm not going to end my turn just yet. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the Onikai minions and the Zephylite minions into play. So when a minion comes into play, guys, it'll always get played in the leftmost spot. Lanes will activate left to right. Uh, I do not have to put my cards down left to right, even though you just saw me do that. I can play this guy over here if I want to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and bring the Zephylite minions and engage them, and I'm going to engage the Onikai minions as well. Okay, You also do not have to have a card here to engage minions. So I could say I want to engage the Getting Yard minions. Right? Even though I don't have a card here to oppose them, I can still go ahead and engage them. Um, now, during the fight phase, which is going to be in a couple, uh, in, in two more phases, what's going to happen is uh, allies and minions that are opposed to each other are going to do battle. If a one of my allies is uncontested, he will do damage straight to the portal. If a minion or a, or, or a monster is uncontested, and he will do damage straight to my castle. Okay? So both these guys are exhausted. Uh, I'm going to bring those guys in there for that. And we're going to go ahead and move to the next phase. Okay, the next phase is the treachery phase, guys. What you will do is take the top card of the uh, deck, and you will look either on the left or the right-hand side. There's going to be either one of two symbols. There's going to be a sword or a lightning bolt. So this is a lightning bolt. So this means that there's going to be a treachery effect on the card of this monster. So it says... The treachery effect of this is the outsider or the portal will gain plus one health. This monster does not get summoned into play. I'm ignoring the monster and I'm just reading the treachery effect. So it says the outsider or the portal will gain plus one health. The outsider is supposed to be prioritized, but he is not in play yet. So the portal will gain plus one health, making seven. Uh, I need to take that. That needs to do seven damage to be able to be destroyed. Okay. 
that is the treachery phase. Also, at this point in time, if I had any cards that had the treachery symbol, which is the lightning bolt on it, I could play them at this time by paying the mana cost, which I don't have any at this moment. Okay, now we go into the fight phase, guys. So we're going to resolve everything from left to right. Uh, everything will be attacked simultaneously, right? So my shamans and Ziflite minions will attack simultaneously. So they are dealing one damage, and uh, I am dealing two damage to them, uh, one for there and plus an extra attack. So I have one armor, which will prevent one damage. So I take no damage here. They take two damage. They be, get destroyed and just go back into the back line out of play. I have destroyed them, so I will get to draw a card. Uh, I have drawn Clan of the Wildcat for two mana. Uh, it's got plus uh, two attack and three health. I may return during the fight phase. I may return Clan of the Wildcat to the owner's hand. If you do, any non-outsider monster who is engaged with them does not deal damage during this fight. Okay, another thing I didn't mention, guys, is the text on the cards. They will tell you what phase that ability will activate. So when I play the card, that will be the play effect. I will read that effect. Some have the exhaust effect. Some have a fight. So basically like this Clan of the Wildcat I just read, that means during the fight phase when he attacks... I can activate that ability when that happens, right? So for every phase, there's going to be a different flavor text on the card, okay? So they are resolved. So now let's resolve these two. So he is dealing one damage to me. I am dealing two damage to him. So he only has one health, so he will be destroyed. And this monster, Onikai minions, are defeated, and they will go back into the back line, and I will get to draw another card, which is Clan of the Oak. So it costs three mana. Uh, as long as Clan of the Oak has no neighbors, they gain plus one armor. And he's got a attack of three and a health of three. Okay, so that is the fight phase. We have resolved everything. Now we uh, go to the pillage phase, okay? So any minions in the back line still that have health on them will go ahead and pillage cards. So I am pillaging four cards from the top of my deck. So that's one, two three and four and then any minions that were engaged that still have health left over that were in play they will get put back into the uh in into the back line and they do not count right so i could have put him in here just to not discard cards but then he would have done damage to my castle so that's how that would have worked and then we now go to the end phase so if my if the gate was not destroyed uh at the end of this turn i'm going to rotate the gate 90 degrees and then I will discard down to seven cards, which I have five right here. And that is the end of one entire turn, guys, of Sky Tier Horde. Now, I will remove three health from these Ratamil minions because if you remember the uh, card I had, he's, he only gains uh, three health for the remainder of the turn, right? Uh, he will not activate the second effect. A monster is destroyed. Ratamil gains plus one health because, well, actually, he would have because they are considered uh, monsters. So I actually would discard two more cards uh, because of that. I forgot about that. Um, so then I will remove uh, both of these because uh, those were just for a turn. Oop, fix that real quick. And then now we reset and we start back up top from the refresh phase. So refresh phase, I gain four mana equal to the number on the portal. I will unexhaust any exhausted cards that I have at my ability. We will move to the Horde phase now, where I am drawing one card from the top of the deck, and this is a Stormcaller. So um, Stormcaller is going to say play two different allies, gain a minus one attack token. Uh, and that is not just for the end of the turn, that is a permanent effect. And he also has Taunt, so at the end of the Alliance phase, this monster must be engaged. So you will put him in the leftmost position, he's got an attack of two and a health of four. Uh, so one of my guys will get a minus one attack, which is that. And then uh, we move on to the alliance phase. So we are at me. So I got four. Hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, this got to be flipped on the other side. So remove up to two from the castle and exhaust shamans. Nope. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is exhaust my shamans to add one mana to the mana track. So I'm at five. I'm going to spend uh, one, two, and yeah, I'm going to spend two to play Clan of the Wildcat. Um, I'm going to spend 
Um, three to play Clan of the Oak. All right, put them there. Uh, so he's not really doing any damage, but he can't give me mana. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to swap and shift the Clan of the Oak with the uh, with the shamans. I'm gonna move each of these guys in this direction here, which leaves him. He has no neighbor, so he will gain a armor token for not having a neighbor. All right, and then I think I'm good. I am good, so I will end my turn there. So now we move to the treachery phase. Uh, so now we see here, this symbol is a sword. So this means the rightmost monster in play will gain a plus one attack, which would be him. So he will gain a plus one attack on his turn. And then we will move to the fight phase, guys. So the, uh, oh, he's exhausted. Uh, the fight phase will conclude, will attack. So both these guys are going to go. And so I am dealing uh, three damage to him. He is dealing three damage to me, but I get to block one. So I am, he's taking three damage and then whoop, he is taking three damage. And then uh, I am taking uh, two, right? Yep. I'm taking two because I have that armor token. Uh, next clan of the wildcat will go. So I will deal uh, two damage. So I'll remove the plus one and then add a minus one to him. And then I deal zero damage because I have a minus one. That is the fight phase. Now we move to the pillage phase. So I will pillage one card from the top of the deck for the Yetnar minions having one health. And then we go to the end phase where we will rotate the portal 90 degrees. Uh, and then I will discard down to seven, but I only have three. All right. Back up top to the refresh phase, guys. I will gain uh, four mana. I will unexhaust any cards that I have exhausted. And now we will go to the horde phase. But you'll notice that the portal says zero. So I will summon zero cards from the horde deck. And then we, so we will move straight into the alliance phase. So I am at four. Uh, hmm. This uh, plus one token will go away because uh, the treachery is just for one. Uh, I still have no neighbors. Uh, hmm. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend one mana and play the Sky Tier Mine. So I can add two mana to the mana track. I can remove up to two uh, minus health from an ally or from the castle. So I will remove two health from him. So I am at five. Uh, hmm. I will exhaust my shamans to increase this to six. I will spend five. Uh, bringing me down to one to play the Wind Riders. Uh, so I'm going to put the Wind Riders over here. And then I have one mana left. So I think I'm going to spend that mana to exhaust my castle. And I can draw, I can either remove two health from the castle or remove two health from an ally or draw a card. I think I'm going to draw a card. All right. I get another Shamans, all right? This is exhausted. I'll rotate that 90 degrees. And now let's go ahead and go to the Treachery phase. So Treachery phase, we have a sword over here in the uh, left-hand corner. So he will gain a plus one uh, token here. So he gets plus one health. And these two will go ahead and activate. So again, I'm dealing uh, three damage to him. He is dealing uh, three back to me, but I get to prevent one. So I am only taking uh, two damage. Uh, so this guy will be defeated. Okay, so he is defeated. And I've defeated a monster, so I will get to draw a card. Which this is a Clan of the Maple. Five mana, four attack, three health. Uh, during the fight phase, the Clan of the Maple and a monster in the lane to the right may strike each other. All right. Uh... So now we will proceed uh, moving from left to right. So Clan of the Wildcat will deal two damage to the portal. Uh, so I'll just take this away and give him with a three. Uh, he will still deal zero and he will deal five. Uh, so that's three, that's four, and that's three, four, and five. Okay. So even though I have dealt the required attack, the portal will not do anything until the end of the end phase. All right. So that is the entire fight phase in total. So now we move to the pillage phase. I am pillaging one card from the top of my deck for the Yetnar minions. 
And now we move to the end phase. So the portal has taken enough damage to be destroyed. So I will remove all of the health from this portal. I will take the portal and remove it from play. And then I will take the next portal and put it upright position. So this, let's see what we're looking at here. So we got a zero, one, one, one. This will give me six mana every turn. This portal has a health of eight. And this says summon all cards in the outsider pile at the end of the horde phase. At the end of the turn, when this portal is destroyed, reveal the next portal card in its upright orientation. All right. Uh, so that was the end phase, guys. We now move to the refresh phase. So I will gain six mana. All right. Uh, I will ready any exhausted cards. So exhaust them, unexhaust them, and unexhaust my castle. And then we will remove, go to the horde phase. So I'm drawing one horde card. We have a gathering storm. So it says the uh, Yetnar minions gain plus two health. All right. And, and portal. So the Yetnar minions will gain plus two health. It says monster and the portal gain plus one armor for the remainder of the turn, all right? So the portal will get plus one armor for the remainder of the turn, and that is it. Now I must do the portal card and summon the outsider in the most leftmost space. So let's take a look at the Hatebringer, guys. So when he is played, the Hatebringer strikes the ally he's engaged with. Uh, otherwise, if the Hatebringer is not engaged, he will strike the castle. So he is engaged with him, he will strike. Uh, I will not fight back. So I'm immediately taking four damage, which is enough to kill my clan of the Oak uh, member. And he becomes defeated. And then let's take a look at him. So he's got an attack of four, health of three, and he has armor two. Uh, so he has armor two on him permanently. So he is always preventing two damage, all right? So that is the horde phase. We'll now move to me in the alliance phase. So let's see, I got six mana here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is move my shamans over here. Uh, I'm going to move my wind raiders here for now. I will exhaust my shamans to add one mana to the mana track. Uh, I'm going to spend five. So that brings me down to two. And I think I'm going to play the clan of the maple here. I'm going to move my wind riders right here. And then... Um, I think I'm okay for now. What do I have to? Actually, I will spend two more mana to play my shamans in this position here. And actually, I'm going to put him here for now. Put him there. And then I will exhaust my shamans to add one mana to the mana track. Um, I will use that mana to exhaust my castle to draw a card. So exhaust them and draw a card. And what do we get? We get another Shamans, all right? Uh, and then that's pretty much, uh, I think, all I can do. So I'm ready. So let's go to the Treachery phase, guys. So the Treachery phase is going to be, whoa, Double Sword. So we have a Double Sword. So he is gaining plus two attack uh, on, the rem on this phase for this turn, okay? Uh, woof, that's brutal. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the fight phase and engage. So they are engaging. So he is dealing six. I am dealing five. He is preventing two of that. So he will take three damage, uh, which that would be enough to kill him. And then he is dealing six to me, which is enough to kill me. All right. So I have defeated the outsider. Uh, so he is dead. So he will just go out of the game. He gets removed from the game. My wind riders get destroyed. All right, and then we will uh, connect with the rest of the phases. We will conclude the rest of the phases. So I'm dealing four damage to the portal, but it has one armor, so it'll only take three. Uh, I am dealing two damage, so it has one armor, so I am only dealing one damage. And then uh, this would deal one, but it prevents it, and he deals zero. All right, so then we move to the pillage phase, which I am pillaging three cards from the top of my deck. All right, and then uh, we move to the end phase. So this has not been defeated. Uh, so this will rotate 90 degrees. The armor token will go away. I will discard down to seven, and then we will restart back over from the refresh. So I will gain six mana. I will unexhaust all of my exhausted cards, and we will move to the horde phase. So we're looking at one card. So the Uteshi Utesh, Swarm. 
So the Zephyrite Minions, this is a spell card, will gain uh, three health, uh, and an Alliance player will lose three mana. So he gains three health, and I will lose one mana, bringing me down to five, and that is all we got. All right. So I'm at five. Hmm. I think I'm going to pay one mana, go down to four, to exhaust my castle to draw a card. And we have Clan of the Maple. So I will exhaust them to uh, add one mana to the track. I will spend all five of that to bring the Clan of the Maple into play. And then um, what I'm going to do is engage the Zephylite minions and the Yetnar minions. I'm engaging both of these guys. And then uh, I'm going to ride out like that. All right, so let's go to the treachery phase. Uh, so the leftmost minion will gain plus one attack. So the uh, Zephylite minions are gaining uh, plus one attack here. So we're going to go ahead and engage. So I'm dealing four damage, and he is dealing four damage back to me. So both of these guys will destroy each other. And uh, these Zephylite minions will go back uh, here, and I will get to draw a card. So I have Bloodlust for one mana. Uh, during the treachery phase, an ally gains plus two attack and plus one armor for the remainder of the turn. That's good. Okay, these guys will engage each other, so I'm dealing four, and they are dealing three to me. So, again, we will kill each other, um, and I get to draw a card. Uh, Overwhelm, during the treachery phase, an ally that is a shapeshifter gains plus three attack and plus three armor for the remainder of the turn, and then remove all negative health from that ally wow uh clan of the wildcat will deal two damage uh so he does not have any armor so i'm gonna put that back and give him a three and then he's dealing one so this is at seven now all right seven seven and then he deals a uh, zero all right uh so then we move to the pillage phase no monsters have any health so i will not pillage any cards we will rotate the card uh 90 degrees and get ready for the next phase and then we restart from square one so the refresh phase i will gain uh six mana all right uh, i will ready any of my exhausted cards that i have available to me and uh, then we move to the horde phase he will uh draw zero cards from the deck and we move straight into me so i am at six huh uh i think what i can do is really uh let me pay one down to five to exhaust my castle and draw a card I get the Stream of Life, which is a treachery card. Remove up to three negative health from an ally. For the remainder of the turn, reduce all damage taken and dealt by that ally to zero. Interesting, all right? Uh, I'm gonna exhaust both these guys to bring my mana track up to two to seven. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is spend four, going down to three to play the Clan of the Elk. I'm gonna go ahead and move all these guys over. I'll, keep, I'll move him over there. I'll just keep them in the same uh let's see what we got here i think i'm gonna hold on to all this i will spend uh actually no i don't want to spend anything yet just yet um i think i am good i'm good okay so we're gonna move to the treachery phase uh so we have a lightning bolt deal one damage to the castle all right so my castle is taking uh one damage we now move to the fight phase, so both these monsters will deal four damage, or two damage, uh, to the castle, making it four, all right? And that concludes, uh, oh, him as well, so that's another damage, uh, so that's five, and he does zero still, and then we will move to the pillage phase, uh, no monsters are pillaging any cards, and we get to the end phase, so this monster has taken enough damage, or this portal, I'm sorry, has taken enough damage to be destroyed, all right? Uh, we will go ahead and discard this card, remove it from play, and place the new card face up. So this one says, summon all cards in the outsider pile at the end of the horde phase. This portal cannot be damaged. Uh, so we will now put the number two uh, outsider back into play. And uh, then we are ready uh, to go. All right, guys. Uh, so... Uh, it says this portal cannot be damaged. So my goal strictly here is to destroy this last hate bringer. All right. Uh, and then uh, we start back from the top. So the refresh phase. 
So I'm getting uh, four mana, so that's one, two, three, four. I will unexhaust all of my exhausted cards. And then um, we will go to the horde phase. So zero horde monsters are coming in. The Hatebringer is the only one that is coming in. So he is coming in. Play the Hatebringer gains plus one attack and trample for the remainder of this turn. Oof, ay, ay, ay. Uh, all right. And then, uh, so he has a armor of three, a attack of five, and a health of four. So we got three armor on this bad boy. Uh, he's got five attack, health of four. And, uh, yeah, he's ready to go. So now we're on to me. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I might just try and stack all this together and see what we got here. Um, so I'm going to exhaust both of these to gain two mana. That's one, two. I'm going to spend one mana, exhaust my castle to draw a card, and I get another bloodlust, okay? Uh, all right, let's move into the treachery phase, all right? And he is gaining an extra attack. So he is gaining, uh, woof, that's a lot of damage, man. All right. So let's see, I'm going to spend, I, so I'm still in the treachery phase. I got cards here that I want to play. Uh, so I'm going to spend three mana, one, two, three, to play Overwhelm, an ally that is a shapeshifter will gain plus three attack and plus three armor uh, for the remainder of the turn. So plus three attack and uh, plus three armor uh, for the remainder of the turn. And uh, I will remove all uh, minus health from that ally, which he has none at this current time. I'm then gonna spend one more mana to play Bloodlust. Uh, an ally gains plus two attack and plus one armor for the remainder of the turn. So plus one armor and plus two attack. All right. So I'm loaded up here. Let's see if I can one shot this guy. So we will now move into the fight phase. So here we go. Uh, these again, damage can't go to the portal. So let's see. I'm hitting him for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm hitting him for seven. He is preventing three of that. So that is four. So that will be enough to kill him. And then he would hit me for five, six, seven. And I'm preventing four, which is three. So we basically kill each other. So we are killing each other, guys. And let me put all these back real quick. So we basically kill each other. And I have been successful and defeating the hate bringer he gets removed from game and we are victorious um all right guys so that is a solo playthrough of a uh, sky tier horde that again this is the normal difficulty so this difficulty is pretty easy guys uh i'm definitely going to do a playthrough of a harder difficulty with a different clan so you guys can see that but this is the basics of sky tier horde guys it's kind of fun i like it my first impressions um you know, I like the laning and the tower defense almost of it, and I like the different combinations and you can use. It does get a little overwhelming sometimes with just the number of different phases um, that come to you. Um, but yeah, guys, I uh, hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Hope you enjoy this content. Uh, if you have backed uh, or, or did you back Sky Tier Horde, go ahead and drop that in the comments for me. And as always, guys, subscribe to our channel so we can br keep bringing you more awesome content. Y'all have a great one. Bye.